Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit narrow. Boom, boom. That'll work. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, so we're live. <laughs> I hope that you can hear me. This is a bit of a sound check. Can you guys out in Facebook land hear me through my mic here? If you can just give me a shout out on uh, the feed there and let me know that you can hear me. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, maybe we'll just get started. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Stephen Nakamala, and this is the 30-day um, Unleash the Dragon Within Challenge. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm, I'm giddy, and thank you so much for joining me. Um, the point of these challenges, why I'm doing this, is because, of course, we're all going through really interesting times uh, with the COVID pandemic and sheltering in place. And a lot of people are experiencing a lot of you know, stress and anxiety. And I wanted to provide something that would help people through this challenging time. Um, one of the reasons why I think a lot of us are feeling challenged is, be, is because we're also appreciating how, the, how complex um, this situation is. You know, um, being you know, in shelter in place while society is going through a pandemic is being a lot like being sick you know, with something in your, in your liver or your, your kidney or something. And you have this convalescence period where you can contemplate, you can appreciate the job that part of your body normally does. And in a way, we are convalescing as a society. We're getting a chance to reflect on, hey, what, you know, how, how do things normally work? And are, are we really doing what we want to be doing? Is our normal way of being a healthy way of being? And I think our general answer is, yeah, we're not going back to normal. But what will normal look like? And when we think about that, there are so many variables. There are complex systems that are at play. And whenever we're confronted with a complex system, well, it's challenging. It, it, can, create, it can create a sense of you know, uh, um, paralysis. So why I'm doing this and what I wanted to offer was one of the best gifts and best tools that I've ever come across that makes working with complex situations fun. And the way, by, the way of doing that, it's a system that's based on animal archetypes that represent different aspects of yourself. And as you get to learn about the different parts of yourself, about the different parts of your mind, the different systems of your anatomy, it helps you learn how to embrace complexity. Complexity, yes, with it within yourself, but also the complex nature of the world around us. And so that's why I'm offering this class, so that during this period you get a chance to be in, it, to play, and check out with curiosity and with, with, with wonder and awe, uh, the, the wonders of movement and of breathing and of a wonderful, rich martial art. And as you get comfortable with that, also ask yourself, uh, uh, give yourself a chance, give people in the challenge to ask themselves a chance uh, to ask themselves, what in this wonderful, complex being that I am, what are the resources that I can bring to myself, to my family, my community, and to the world as we move forward, especially after the shelter in place ends. How are we going to make the world the place that we want to live in? And the best way of doing that is by uh, being able to flow and embrace with the complex. And the best way to do that is through breath and movement, where that allows you to find your center so that as things come along, you can better flow and move with them. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, I'm really excited about this 30-day uh, challenge. And um, 
it's going, the 30 day challenge is going to be divided up into three phases. And uh, the first phase, uh, and it's all based on, the, on my book, the uh, Unleash the Dragon Within. Uh, the first phase, we're going to be looking at alignment. And we'll introduce the animals a little bit, well, quite a bit. In the second phase, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look more closely at the animals. And we'll do more fun um, uh, martial art kind of moves that rely on the alignment work we did in the first phase. And then in the third phase, we get to play with dragons. So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll also, um, there are, we're, the way that the challenge is going to go, um, I'm going to have these movement videos. I'll go through movement exercises and practices that you can do. And I'll also provide um, 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 extra work that you can do t if you want to go deeper. Like I say in the post, I'm a professor, so there's an option for homework. So there is some diary writing, and there are practices you can do on your own afterwards. They're completely optional. It's just to, you know, to support people's curiosity. Uh, pick and choose. Do as much as you need or as much as you want. Uh, take and keep what works for you. Let go what doesn't. It's all up to you. Um, and it's simply the best that... I have to offer, and so I'm going to go ahead and offer it because what the hell, uh, it's fun. And, um, and there's some little surprises that were, are reserved all along the way that, we're, that I'm still working on. Um, so I'll announce those as we move along. Um, so let's get started, shall we? So uh, what we're going to do first, the way today is going to go, um, I'm going to do a little uh, video. We're going to do, sorry, we're gonna, I'm going to give instruction on our first animal. Great animal to start with. It's the beginning of everything. It's boa. Boa represents the breath, and it's a great place to start from. And so we'll do a little bit of the boa bow. I'll show you how to do that. And then we are going to do a alignment exercise. And we're going to go back to the boa bow. And the reason for doing that is you're going to be taking a before you're going to be comparing a before and after picture. So you'll do the bow, the bow of bow first. Then we'll do the alignment exercises. And then we'll go back and do the bow again so you can see the difference. And, and, and that difference, um, it's a re it, it, that's the first step in any movement artist's journey is being able to approach a movement from a different angle, to find a difference in how they moved before and how they're trying to move now. So uh, it's, it's my specialty. It's what I do. Okay. Um, so let's get into it. So let's start with the boa bow. And I think I'll just check the camera really quick just to make sure people can hear. See, people are watching. I hope you can hear it. I saw some thumbs up go, so I'm, I guess that means you can hear. All right. And you can let me know in comments. For some reason, the camera insisted it upright. If it needs to be sideways, I'll figure that out later. But let's get into the boa. Oh. So, if you're here with me, yeah. <clears throat> we'll start off by standing straight, knees slightly bent, and feel your weight evenly distributed between both feet. And you're not quite forward, and you're not quite back. And you're in between. We are going to rock forward, back and forth, but we'll, but we'll, we'll do that as we, as we proceed. And uh, you want to feel, you want to scan your body. So we'll start with a little body scan. Feel the tension around your, any tension around your head. Relaxing the scalp, the backs of the eyes, the tongue, your jaw. Feel your head. Stand on top of your, your neck, your cervical vertebrae. Come down, feel your collarbones, collarbones at the front, your shoulder blades at the back, and feel your arms hanging from the sockets of your shoulder blade. Come to your spine, feel the spine all the way down the length of your back, and feel the rib cage just hanging off of the spine. Feel your stomach, your abdomen. Feel your lower back, feel your pelvis, 
your legs, your knees, your feet, and just take a mental snapshot of what your body feels like. So take a kinesthetic snapshot of your body. get into the bow. So this is uh, how to do the boa bow. Um, the boa, first of all, is very relaxed, um, and it's very flowy and circular. And I'll describe the motion first, and then I'll be more characteristic later on. But let's do the motion. So the way that it starts, you bend in the knees, and you relax your, your spine and your chest, and you curl over, and that's what to say as above so below, so you bend the knees only as much as you can let your chest relax and and contract. So you drop down and let the head curl over. And and you turn the feet in and as you turn the feet in, so they're, you're pigeon toed, your hands start to caress the inside of the of, uh, of the barrel at the back. So imagine you're in a big barrel and your hands are caressing the inside of this big barrel that you're in. So you turn the feet in and the hands go back and they caress the inside of the barrel. And as you're doing that, you're lengthening in the knees, you're straightening in the knees and you're curling up in your spine. And that brings the arms up and as, the, as you're bringing your arms up, you're letting the, drop, the elbows drop. And then the hands come up to the face. And then the fingers brush across the eyes as though you're brushing cobwebs away from the eye. And the hands go out. And it's as though you're hugging a very big beach ball. And you hug the beach ball. You bring the beach ball in. The hands come in, and then the hands drop forward, um, like you're presenting a nice dish in front of somebody. And as the and the hands sort of come to about your elbows come to about 90 degrees, and they stay there as you curl over. So that's one boa bow. And the way that the boa feels is um, is light and floating and soft. And as you do the motion, you try to relax as much as possible. It's there, the image that's coming to me right now, and this is, this is how my mind works. It's almost like you're you know, floating in, like in, womb, in, in, a, in a womb. You're just surrounded by, um, by fluid and your, your limbs are just floating, like in a flotation tank. So let's try it a few more times. So with the boa, bending in the knees, curling in the chest. As your head curls over and you, uh, your chest contracts, your hands go behind you, and the palms are caressing the inside of the barrel. Your feet turn in. The arms come forward. As the arms are coming forward, you're straightening in the knees, and your arms are rising. As your arms are rising, the elbows turn down. The hands come up to the face and you brush the cobwebs away from the eyes. And the arms go out and you hug a big beach ball. Bring the beach ball in. And let go of the beach ball. So just a fun motion to do. It's a lovely little sequence to do, and as you do it, you're just asking yourself, how much more relaxed can I get? How much softer can I get? When you encounter a little, pe little area of tension in your body, you try and soften and relax it. Bring the arms in, and exhale, release. And one more time. Breathe in deep to your lower back. To breathe deep into your whole body. Fill up like a sponge with breath. 
As you fill up, you expand, hold the beach ball, and then bring the beach ball in and exhale. And one more time, you go to the back, the hands go to the back, bend the knees, throw up. Hold the beach ball. And curl down. Good. We'll do about two or three more times. And let me just give you a bit more explanation about what the boa represents. And as I like to say in my classes, I don't care if you get the moves exactly right. What's more important is that you're giving yourself a chance to explore the texture and the quality of the animal. The boa is the part of ourselves um, that is, uh, an, is empathy and the unconscious. And it represents the breath. And it represents meditative void. That feeling you get when you're on your center and um, you're sort of like unflappable and aware in all directions. Uh, the way that the bow moves is, again, it's soft, it's lyrical, and as you're moving, you want to feel like you've got little helium balloons under each one of your joints, and they're just floating. Your arms float in the air, your shoulders are floating, your spine, your pelvis, your knees, your feet are all floating, your head, your jaw, and as you do the motion, you just keep trying to promote a sense of floating in each one of your joints, like you, and softening and relaxing. And as you do that, you ask yourself, as you're doing that motion, you, you reflect or you draw on empathy. So, uh, with empathy, you know, you feel, so you're capable of feeling what other people are feeling. Um, it, it's being able to take a different perspective. So you want to feel as though you can send the intelligence of your empathy out and that you can feel your surrounding area. And so while you're moving, you're feeling, you're imagining as though the billows of your empathic, of your empathic awareness are helping your body to float and move. And it's an imagination. It's an imagination exercise. But the idea is to build a relationship between movement and an aspect of your consciousness. Um, you know, it's all very fine and well to like be empathetic in a moment when you're sitting still and nothing else is going on. But part of what we do with the forms is that we engage in a, a cognitive ability like empathy. And we engage with a an aspect of our consciousness while moving so that we cultivate practicing holding that mental state, that, that state of mind, while we're in motion and we're working and interacting with the world. So that's the practice with the six animals. So it's, it's about discovering these different aspects of yourself and then being able to hold them while you're moving without them dribbling away. So let's do the bow one more time. And if there's an, an experience in your life that, you're, that you can remember that deals with empathy, when you connected with somebody emotionally and deeply, if there was a piece of art that spoke to you in an evocative and, and deep way, remember those moments. Feel where in you you were touched and feel like you're breathing right into that part of your body and that the motion of the bow is coming from that part of your body. Let's try it together. So take a moment, feel, and feel like you have 
waves of awareness rippling out from you, from you as the center, and you're connecting with raw life force. May the fourth be with you. You're connecting with the breath of things. You're connecting with the gift that things have to offer you. And you're feeling them connect with you. And you inhale and you breathe in that connection and you exhale and you move from that connection. And you start to inhale, floating. Feel like waves of empathy are caressing the walls that are out of your reach. One more time. Curl down and caress the inside of the barrel, lifting, raising, straightening the knees, straightening the spine, brush the cobwebs away from your eyes. Hold the world, embrace the world, bring it in, and exhale, connecting to your sense of empathy and that calm center. So that's the bow of bow. I hope you enjoyed that, and you can do that you know, anytime during the day, and that will help you build a, a sense of, cultivate a sense of calm whenever you want. We're going to continue here, and we're going to do a little alignment exercise. And I'm going to go on the floor, and I'm going to guide you through an exercise that involves breathing and, and your arms to release, you know, just tension that we all pick up during the day as we're all on our phones, social messaging each other during social distancing, um, or while we're on our computers and laptops. So we're going to help relieve some of that tension in the shoulders. And it's great for doing BOA. It's also great for any time you're working at your computer, which is like, you know, all the time. Um, so let's, I'll, I'll get on the floor here, and hopefully you can still see me. Yeah, it should be all right. Okay, good. Yeah, that'll work. All right, and I've got my little headset on, so this is all a juggling act. And I, yeah, that should work. Um, I think you can see me. Okay, actually, I wonder if. Um, so you'll be lying on the ground. I'm going to get up in a second. But you're lying on the ground, and what I'd like you to do is to hug yourself because there's just not enough of that in the world. You're going to hug yourself. You're going to take your hands and cup the shoulders of your body, of course. And you know, you're going to hold them. And I want you to take like a deep, a slow, deep, you know, two or three deep breaths in and just notice how your, sh what your shoulders do. So if you breathe in deep and you exhale, you kind of notice that your shoulders move a little bit and you can even see your elbows move a little bit. So your shoulders rise as you inhale and as you exhale, they fall. So they, when you rise, you inhale, and you exhale, they fall. And what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in deep and allow the shoulders to rise up. And the hands, you know, you're hugging your shoulders, but I want you to imagine that these hands are not your own. There's some, like, invisible giant up in the sky who's reaching down and clasping your shoulders. And what happens is that every time you breathe in, it raises your shoulders up a little bit. And then when you exhale, the giant and his hands keep your shoulders at the new height while you exhale and relax. So it's got, I'm going to make this much bigger. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now, that's way too quick and it's not relaxing at all. But when we do it slowly, what I want you to feel is as though the as you exhale, 
you're going to allow, even though you're holding your shoulders up, you're going to allow the tension in your back to drop down in a way as you exhale, okay? So I'll do this with you first lying down and then I'll get up. So let's try it together. So you're, you have your, you're hugging your shoulders and you're going to breathe in deep. And your shoulders are now at a new position in space. And you're going to use your hands to keep them in, at that position in space as you exhale. So I'm, my shoulders are a little bit higher. And my back is relaxing and dropping away from my shoulders. And I keep them there. And I inhale. And my shoulders go up a little bit more. Not much. It's like a smidgen. And then as I exhale, the hands keep my shoulders at that new elevated height. And just keep relaxing. Keep relaxing. Inhale. And as you exhale, Keep the shoulders at their new height while the back releases and drops away from the shoulders. And one more time, breathing in deep. The shoulders go up on the in-breath, and then on the out-breath, I keep them at that height, but I let my back relax and drop away from the shoulders. And as you're doing this, you want to release any tension you can feel in the rest of your body. One more time, breathing in. The shoulders rise a little bit, like a, like a beach ball rising on water in a tub that you're filling. And then as you exhale, you keep the beach ball at that height while the water level drops. One more time, breathe in deep, raise the beach ball. Then as you exhale, keep the beach ball there as the water level drops. Good. And then release, relax, and just feel what impression your body is making in the floor. Stay on the floor. I'm going to get up. And just feel, continue to feel what impression your body is making in the floor. Okay, good. Now, breathe in, uh, breathe in deep, relax, roll over, come up to a stand slowly. Don't get, don't get a head rush, don't, you know, don't rush yourself. And try and, try and when you're getting up to like curl up and stack one vertebra on top of the other so that it's relaxing. Um, and come up to a stand. You know, if you get a bit of a head rush, you know, have something next to you that you can, um, you know, you can hold on to. Um, and um, now what we're going to do is do the boa bow. But first, check your body out. Scan your body. Take a, take a little snapshot of how your body feels. Right. Do you feel looser in the shoulders? Are they more open? Do they feel puffier? Um, if you feel like you're, do, you know, do you feel you're perhaps doing this, or you, do you feel like you're perhaps doing that? Just check out. Don't judge. Just observe. Now we're going to do the boa bow a second time, and check out the difference. See how it feels different this time. All right. So again, connect to the aspects of yourself of empathy of the unconscious, and as you move, it's as if you're moving from your sense of empathy and from your unconscious. And so exhale. Inhale, curling up. Bring your arms up. Brush the cobwebs from your eyes. 
hug the beach ball, bring the beach ball in, release. And just feel, how does this feel different from before? Are your arms more floaty? Are your shoulders more relaxed? Is it easier to flow with your spine and your arms than it was before? And hopefully you do feel more relaxed. And that feeling of relaxation is what that boa bow is all about. Um, I believe, I know I know that there are some other martial artists from other disciplines who are watching and yoga instructors. And um, I really found that these kinds of alignment exercises are really helpful in helping to you know, practice, practice my art. Um, being able to relax my body um, and, and remove unnecessary tension helps me find nuances of motion that I wouldn't be able to muscle my way to. So, and this kind of before and after picture after you do an alignment exercise is a really great way of teaching your body, hey, remember this sensation of being relaxed. Remember this feeling of how open I am in the arms or in my breathing or in my, in my movement or my torso. Remember that and come back to that. So, um, so I wanted to share that for people who are movement practitioners. And for those of you who, yeah, you know, for whom this is all new, just doing the boa bow, it can be a, a great, you know, physical expression and reminder of values that you have about being centered, about being sensitive and in touch with things that we don't see but that are really important. You know, and being, and it's a good reminder to stay connected to your ability to take on the perspective of other peoples and to feel them, empathy. Um, so that concludes you know, the, our movement section. And um, I'm gonna post some exercises about diaries and other uh, practices that you can do in addition. But one of the things that you can do uh, at night when you w before you go to bed, it, and I just want to uh, encourage people to try this out. It's a really great way of making the animal your own and making it more real. Is go through your day and remember what you did. Play it back like a video. And then as you go through it, ask yourself, where was the boa in this moment? Where, where was my sense of empathy in this moment? Or if I replayed that scene, was I actually exercising empathy without really being aware of it? And check it, check it out. Replay your day from the perspective um, of those, of the em empathetic and unconscious aspects of yourself. Um, people may wonder, well, how can you, how can your unconscious be present or how can you <laughs> ask the unconscious to have a perspective? Um, what I like to do, the way that I imagine this, is I review my day as if I'm in front of a very large, dark chasm. And the chasm represents the unknown, represents my unconscious. And I imagine a particular scene, you know, coming across my field of view, and it rests in front of me like some sort of event. And I have the chasm behind it, and I kind of contrast what was happening and what I remember with the depth of that chasm. And that contrast helps me connect. It helps me ask the question, how does the deep part of myself respond to this event that I remember? And I don't try and answer it. It's unconscious. You can't, have, you can't get an answer from it right away. If, you, if it's important and you ask the question and let the question rest, if you let the question drop into the, into the chasm, some point later, you'll get a response and you'll get an insight. And that insight will be from a very, from an essential, authentic place within yourself 
and it will, be, it will reveal something that is important and principled about the event that you're remembering. And Boa lives there. It's, if I had to pick one word, okay, two, it's, it's about authenticity and about the essential nature of things. And, and that, that's a great exercise to help look at your day from the perspective of Boa. If you're feeling centered and calm when you're finished, you're doing it right. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station. We'll do a few more exercises. We'll do the bow bow again, and maybe we'll introduce another animal. Uh, we'll see as we go along a little bit here. But thank you so much. What a privilege and a pleasure.